Uh, well, Jude, uh, we're back in Jude and, and uh, verse uh, number 13. Uh, Jude, verse number 13. Uh, we're just climbing through Jude, aren't we? And what do they say? At break, uh, break neck speed? Anyway, uh, there's so much in, in uh, you know, the, the book of Jude. If you take time to uh, just be able to spend so often, we, we skip over and go through so quickly. And we're just looking at here. He gives five illustrations. Uh, and when we allow sin to enter into our lives and and uh, just uh, uh, we, we've looked at uh, you know these uh, the first one uh, spots uh, those feasting without fear uh, feasting without spirit spots in your feast feasting without fear uh, and uh, I, I just put down next to that feast with fear uh, amen it, it's a blessing it's a gift to tremble at the word of God uh, to uh, uh, you know, I, I mean, it, it should be as we hear hear the word of God, just with the respect and all we have of God, uh, God speaking. God said it; that settles it. Uh, may we have a a fear of God. But you know, when sin enters in, sometimes people want to know what's what's wrong with a little sin. What's uh, you know what's uh, it does affect uh, your. Uh, feasting with fear and and uh, and so uh, so uh, the first illustration there's spots in your feast uh, what feasting without fear and and uh, the second illustration clouds without water uh, and uh, driven ever which way uh, and of course we we dealt with uh, unfaithfulness uh, without hope and unfaithfulness and it's a false hope uh, people expect more out of Christians uh, and uh, they don't expect it out of themselves uh, and uh, they uh, they they know it's normal and natural for them to live in sin. But when a Christian does, uh, they, uh, uh, they they have more uh, more hope. There's there's hope uh, that uh, again uh, God is true and and uh, the uh, a new birth is real and and uh, and so uh, again they, but but that's built through a faithfulness. They want to see how long is this going to last. So we look at those clouds without water, uh, driven by the wind. And then the third illustration we at trees. With fainting fruit, says their fruit faints, and then pretty soon, what they're twice dead, uh, without fruit, then twice dead, and then uh, finally plucked up. And uh, fruit trees are to to bear fruit, and uh, we we need to be uh, feast without fear. We need to be faithful. We need to be fruitful, fat, and flourishing. By the way, I did uh, did uh, share that with uh, the uh, nursing home, uh, with the uh, seniors there, and and uh, the Bible says in your old age that you'd be. Uh, we, you'd be flourishing, uh, you'd be uh, fruitful, fat, and flourishing uh, in your old age. And and uh, as we uh, serve the Lord, as we walk with Him, it's amazing what God can do through your life if you be faithful uh, to Him. And and yet sin takes all that away. Uh, and as as sin comes into life, what we look at here in verse number uh, verse number thirteen uh, today: raging waves of the sea, foaming out their shame. Uh, raging waves of the sea foaming out their shame let's pray heavenly father I just want to thank you again for this morning thank you for the book of jude and uh, lord i uh, uh, just uh, think of jude's heart for the people in the last days and lord uh, again it's because of you uh, because of your uh, burden uh, for people in the last days and lord i just think of those that would take the grace of God and turn it to lasciviousness. I, I pray, Father, that you would uh, would again just bless as we uh, look at these illustrations given as uh, we just try to uh, picture uh, the uh, message as, as uh, uh, Jude was relating. I pray, Father, comparing Scripture with Scripture. I just ask, Lord, that you would uh, again bless in the message this morning and as Christians that uh, we would uh, desire uh, Lord, to uh, feast with fear. We would desire to be faithful. Uh, Lord, I, I pray that we'd be the, the servants that uh, uh, you would uh, send, uh, that the messengers, that it would be like a snow in the time of harvest, refreshing, uh, Lord, because we'd simply be obedient to you. Uh, and then, Lord, that we would be uh, fruitful, fat, and flourishing. And these, uh, these raging waves uh, foaming out their shame. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What happens when a Christian allows sin uh, into their life? And and uh, maybe the attitude of, uh, you know, uh, I'm saved. And, and uh, you know, I was thinking of uh, Brother Rod uh, this morning in his illustration. Thank you for that. 
And, you know, he's looking in the mirror and he was prime and pampering himself and, 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 I don't know, putting a little makeup here and there to cover up some of the age spots and none of that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, I know they, uh, I've heard they have guy makeup today. I don't know. But, uh, you know, and, and uh, maybe combing. I wish I had hair to comb. But anyway, combing that, uh, that uh, uh, hair that he has and, and adjusting things and looking in the mirror. And, you know, but the, the Lord spoke to his heart about the message. And, you know, God's looking at what's on the inside. Amen. But he made this statement. He says, but God doesn't care what's on the outside. I don't agree with that, Brother Rod. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I believe he cares, but not uh, the emphasis we put on it. Uh, you know, I, I believe that, you know, the Bible says to glorify, you know, God with your body and your spirit, uh, which are his. And and uh, and so it definitely, uh, you know, uh, I understand that perfectly. And I, I knew what you meant. And and uh, just uh, but. Uh, but uh, again, uh, uh, and, and Jesus taught and, and just, uh, you know, love the illustration he gave and Brother Rod shared it. You clean up the inside of the cup, the outside's going to become clean. And uh, uh, you, you ever you ever tried to wash the dishes and you just wash the inside, not the outside? Uh, it's just kind of natural, isn't it? You wash the whole thing, don't you? And uh, and so if you're going to take the time to wash the inside, you might as well wash the outside. But, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, the uh, testimony when, when when sin comes into a Christian's life, they did have the uh, the uh, a group of, of uh, uh, people in, in Colossians talks about this. They uh, they say, well, our body's not going to heaven anyway. So it doesn't matter what we do with our body. Uh, you know, it's what we do with our spirit. And they actually uh, would uh, allow, uh, you know, uh, sinful lifestyles and stuff because it only affects uh, your body. I mean, the Bible says it's not what you take in anyway. It's what you uh, what comes out. Right. And so what's it hurt to, you know, put some alcohol in you, uh, you know, because it's not what goes in you. It's what comes. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you understand alcohol affects the uh, barrier area of self-control and whatever in your brain. And and uh, all of a sudden what what comes out is affected, too. But uh, but again, understanding, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, that uh, all that we would glorify God sin uh, affects and and uh, what we allow in our practice and in our life and and such definitely can dirty up the inside of the cup. And of course, the outside uh, is going to be affected as well. The Bible says here, uh, you know, just gives the illustration. Jude says and, and uh, again with uh, with Israel and there's there's much about like the Sea of Galilee. And and of course, they had the uh, the ocean there, uh, you know, with with beaches and stuff, too. And so they were very familiar with waves and and uh, and of course, the crashing of the waves that come and and you, you walk along the, uh, you know, the beach. And, and what is it that you find on the beach? All the garbage. I mean, the ocean throws it out, doesn't it? Uh, it's just when those waves come in and, and, and what do you find? Uh, you know, the, the dead stinking crabs, don't you? Uh, you don't see the live ones walking around. Where are they? They're out in the water, aren't they? But uh, the dead or the, uh, the whale that's laying on the beach, he's not alive and, and well, he's he's dead, isn't he? And get close enough, you see the uh, the uh, lice and everything all over him. And and, uh, and and what does the ocean do? It likes to throw out all that which is dead and, and uh, stinking. And, and uh, you know, the, uh, the the pretty shells you see, all those are is just remnants of, of creatures that were alive. And, and you know, they uh, broken up and, and uh, you know, thrown up on the... Uh, the uh, the ocean i mean on the sh shore and and so uh, again this this picture of the uh, the waves he says of these christians that uh, you know these these people that uh, that uh, are in sin and and uh, the results that that take place and and uh, and so he says they're like the the waves uh says here uh in in verse 13 raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame uh foaming out their own shame and uh, when i think of the waves of the sea raging waves what a noise uh it's loud isn't it i mean you, you think of the waves crashing it's it, it's a loud uh loud uh, uh, noise or sound uh here of course raging waves that that means i mean the the, the, the crashing waves the uh, it's amazing with the, the destruction that the these waves can do as they uh, as they crash and and make uh, you know but the first thing that comes to mind these raging waves is is I think of is, is loud uh, loud and and uh, of uh, of these uh, you know uh, just why that illustration is you picture those those raging waves throwing out that garbage uh, you know what would that have to do with a testimony uh, of a, a Christian who's uh, in sin uh, and uh, and so I just uh, you know uh, three things primarily uh, again uh, uh, comparing scripture with scripture it's not the only place that it's used uh, you know these uh, these uh, waves and and uh, if you would Isaiah chapter 57 
Isaiah chapter number 57. Uh, we find here is Isaiah uh, also in using the illustration, uh, Isaiah chapter number 57. And verse number 20, Isaiah 57, verse 20. And the Bible says here, but the wicked are like the troubled sea. Uh, that's not the calm one where you got the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. you know you go out to the ocean and there's those times you get that just kind of a pleasant noise uh, we've got to stay a few places where uh, you know you uh, get to stay on the, uh, the the condo on the beach or whatever and you you open the, the window and it's just kind of a pleasant sound at night whoosh, whoosh, when it's, it's not you know storming and and everything but uh, you know the bible says the wicked are like the troubled sea uh, that's that's storm weather, but like the troubled sea, turbulent, uh, as uh, Jude says, the violent, uh, the violence there. That, uh, but uh, these uh, these waves. But uh, it just says here uh, in uh, verse twenty. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Uh, it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire. and in dirt and I just you know considering uh, you know as, as scripture shares just some things about those who would uh, allow sin or turn uh, sin in life what's what's the effect if i let sin uh, in my life uh, number one they're loud contentions they're loud contentions i I uh, just uh, thought about meditate on how how to, to say this uh, this uh, th- this point, but they're they're loud and you know contentions. I know contentions the the, the fights, but uh, uh, but uh, again they're loud uh, contentions. Uh, you know the Bible says it's a blessing to be quiet. It's a blessing uh, to be quiet. Uh, in uh, Psalms one hundred seven twenty eight through thirty, you can write that down. But it's a blessing. Uh, to be quiet and and uh, look at first timothy chapter two uh first timothy chapter two i like quiet i enjoy kind of picture just rest and peaceful and and uh but uh first timothy in chapter number two. Yeah, that's why I like mornings. Get up and everything's just quiet, beautiful, no noise. Just you and the Lord and your cup of coffee. And uh but uh, uh just be able to take and, and uh, spend time with him and think upon his word and uh, spend time in prayer with him and uh, you're you're not out facing that world yet, and all the commotion that's going to take place. And but uh, first, first Timothy two, the the Bible just says here in verse one, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And uh, a quiet and peaceable life doesn't that sound nice? Isn't that wonderful? Uh, quiet and peaceable life. Philippians 4, 7, the Bible says, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And what's that talking about? In the midst of trouble, the peace that passeth all understanding. Why does it pass all understanding? Because there's commotion all around you. Uh, and yet you're at peace. I always picture that with that, uh, you know, uh, again, the... Uh, the uh, uh, hurricane and and uh, of course the the eye of the storm you probably you know there's there's books written about it and such and and uh, in, in the navy i actually got to experience that where you're uh, you know you're you're in the midst of it everything's just at peace the ocean is flat and and uh, you know they, uh, uh, they they wanted to see uh make sure our our uh, uh, our ship what it could handle or go up so we chased down a hurricane uh, isn't that crazy 
uh, chased down a hurricane and, and went. But, uh, you know, just the, uh, the, uh, the, the peace that is in the, in the center, that commotion all around you. And yet, uh, you know, just kind of a, a picture of, of what, uh, you know, the peace of God is like. It doesn't mean that everything is peaceful. Uh, but with you, it is. Uh, and, uh, you know, to be able to have that peace that passeth all understanding. Uh, and uh, that, that peace that takes place even with all the commotion uh, when your faith is in the Lord. And, and yet sin, that stirs all that up. Uh, sin affects that, that peace uh, that you have. Uh, you can't have peace with God and be in sin, can you? Uh, and uh, uh, it, it, it's not... Uh, the peace that uh, you know I, I was just looking up some different passages and in Isaiah 14 it just talks about there's going to come a time Lucifer is going to be made quiet God's going to make him quiet and uh, it was me he likes to stir things up doesn't he uh, he likes to stir up and create commotion and and uh, problems and, and things and and uh, in, in in people's lives and and uh, just what uh, you know, he he likes to uh, to uh, get his foot in the door and and begin to uh, you know uh, pit people against people and and uh, you know I, I believe that the the, uh, the the devil's in all church division. I, I, I believe that you know the commotion and things in the, uh, the the ministry that the Bible says it's it, it's a blessing to God when His brethren dwell together in unity, and uh, and yet. Uh, you know the uh, the devil doesn't have to be the devil pride can get in there and uh, but uh, again as we uh, as we allow sin uh, into our lives and and uh, but uh, again the the uh, peace that passeth all understanding look at Isaiah chapter 7 uh, and she looked there before I turned away but uh, find the book of Isaiah again Isaiah chapter number 7 Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 3. The Bible says, Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shear Joshub, uh, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway of the fuller's field. And, uh, you know, Sennacherib, as he comes against uh, Judah and Jerusalem, and he's got it besieged, and, and he's, he's, his intent is to go in and, and uh, take over Jerusalem and this battle against him. And, and of course, the uh, king, he goes to uh, to uh, Isaiah to ask, what should we do? And, and, and the message is given. And verse number four, and say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Uh, take heed and be quiet. Isn't that kind of strange? Take heed. I, I like the battle that took place. I forget what king now it just now came to mind. I should have looked it up. But uh, anyway, uh, he says, I want you to go out and face three armies come against him. And it says, I want you to go out and face them, line up and, and battle against them and sing. <laughs> Isn't that a blessing? And sing. You know, you know how odd that would be? You, you go out, three uh, three mighty armies going to go and attack this army, and they're out there singing. That kind of make you a little unnerved, wouldn't it? So sing and glorify God. Uh, and so they went out and sang and glorify God. And what happened? Those three armies turned against each other. They couldn't get along anyway. Uh, you know, my, my uh, uh, enemy of my enemy is my friend, or whatever. Anyway, these three, three armies, they fought each other. They wiped each other completely out. Uh, and here's Israel just standing there just singing. And uh, uh, it's, it's a blessing to see God work. Uh, I believe a lot of times we're, uh, we're in turmoil because uh, we aren't trusting God to work. And uh, he says here, we'll just go out and be quiet. He says, uh, take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria and the son of Ramila, because the Syrian Ephraim and the son of Ramila have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, let us go up against Judah and vex it and let us make a breach therein for us and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tibril. And uh, it says, Thus saith the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Uh, Casting all your care on him, for he careth for you, that the peace that passeth all understanding. There's just something about when you come to a time that you just, uh, you know, you have faith in God, and you just trust God to take care of it. Uh, And so it doesn't keep you awake. 
And it doesn't stress your life out. And you can have peace. And somebody can come and say, how can you just sit there and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and not be making all the commotion everybody else is making in the midst of this and worried and, and uh, you know, everything else. How can you? Because God's got it. You know, uh, God's got it. Just a, a, a faith that brings peace uh, in the midst of a storm. going to look up you know verses that talk about trusting in the lord and there is so many in the bible I started making a list and and you know the list got longer and longer and longer and and uh, so i narrowed that down i just got a couple of pages of them here but uh, i'm not going to read them all uh that's for my blessing but uh, again if you look uh, but just want to read a few of them the bible says uh in psalms 27 14 wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart wait i say on the lord Psalm 37, 34, wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. It's kind of picture with those illustrations. Let God fight the battle. Let God take care of it. Uh, trust him. Psalm 69, 6, let not them that wait on thee, O Lord, God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Proverbs 20, 22, Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. You know why God doesn't take care of it? Because you're trying to take care of it. Uh, he's not going to fight you for control. But it's when we give him control. We say, Lord, you take it. Proverbs 133, uh, chapter 1, verse 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Psalm 37, 9. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Psalm 59, 9. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee. Uh, because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. Psalm 62, 5, my soul wait only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Psalm 104, 27, these wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. Uh, to wait upon the Lord. I'm not going to go through and read all these, but uh, again, as uh, we wait upon him, you know, in Proverbs, Proverbs talks about it personifies as you're going through it, the uh, uh, wise woman. And so it, it personifies personification, in other words, makes a person out of, uh, you know, as, as we look at wisdom uh, personifies as a wise woman, a faithful woman, a wife. Uh, the uh, the uh, world's wisdom is personified by the foolish woman, the harlot, the unfaithful woman. And, uh, uh, you know, just the, the results of, of being faithful to a faithful woman versus being faithful to an unfaithful woman and, and all the, uh, the, 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 the trials and stuff that come. And as he, he personifies, and this is what he says about the, the foolish woman, the, uh, the uh, wisdom of this world and, and uh, in Proverbs uh, chapter number nine, if you would, Proverbs chapter number nine. Uh, wrong way. Look to the left of Isaiah. Proverbs chapter number nine. Verse 13. The Bible says a, a foolish woman is clamorous. A lot of commotion with a foolish woman. A foolish man, woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. And uh, uh, again, it doesn't say women are clamorous. You know, you always get that, uh, you know, the Bible talks about silly women. Well, it doesn't say women are silly. But there are silly women, aren't there? There are silly men, too. There are clamorous women and there are clamorous men. And uh, but, uh, you know, just uh, think of, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, clamorous 
Uh, you know, I, I always think with, with clamorous, I think of, you know, getting some pans and beating them together. I mean, it's noisy, isn't it? Uh, clamorous. But the Bible says a foolish woman is clamorous. The, the wisdom of this world, uh, what does it do? It creates a lot of commotion. Uh, you know, you think of the, the violent waves of the sea that spew out their shame and, and uh, you know, again, the, the commotion that takes place. But uh, there's a lot of peace. There's a lot of quiet just waiting upon the Lord. Uh, trusting God to take care of it. I think it's their loud contentions. It can stir up a lot of problems. You know, it's amazing the... Uh, when you when you uh, when you look at a group of people and and uh, you know in, in a church and the one who is making the most noise, uh, causing the most problems, you, you, if, if if you know, I mean, it, it's almost like they're broadcasting their sin in my life. Things aren't right between me and God. I'm unhappy, and uh, and so they cast that on everybody else and everything else. And there's fighting and struggling with relationships and and uh, uh, you know and and uh, I mean. Uh, he says they're like raging waves what? spewing out their shame. Uh, when you have Christians who aren't right with God, it affects us. We think, oh, I can get along with a little sin in my life. Nobody will know it. Uh, Christians are supposed to be amiable. You know, I mean, easy to get along with. Pleasant. Uh, but you get a Christian with sin. They're clamorous. And uh, loud contentions. But secondly, their loud testimony. Their loud testimony to be loud. Does the Bible say those things spoken in secret will be shouted from the housetop? Uh, the loud testimony. Again, I'm just going to read it to you. I printed it down here again so you wouldn't turn, have to turn back to it. But Isaiah 57, 20 again, the other time this illustration is used, is, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Uh, speaking of their testimony, their testimony is loud. Have you ever heard anybody talk about hypocritical Christians? Say, no. Uh, well, then you haven't talked to anybody about Christians, have you? But uh, uh, invite somebody to church. Maybe not the first person you invite. Maybe the first person you invite. But you won't get very far if you invite a few people to church. You're going to have somebody say, I don't go to church. There's a bunch of hypocrites there. What is he saying? He's saying, those Christians that have sin in their life are loud. I, I, I try to encourage people, you know, uh, I, I'd invite you to come to church and you'd find out there may be a hypocritical Christian there, but I'd like you to look around and notice all of the sincere Christians that love the Lord, that are walking with the Lord, that are praising God, that, uh, you know, their, their relationship is right, that their, uh, their life's not immoral, that they're, uh, you know, they, they may mess up here and there, and they're sorry for it, and they uh, grieve because of it, and they ask God to forgive them uh, when that happens. And, but, but truly their intent is they want to live right and honor the Lord. And, and you know, the church is full of them, but one, one Christian, Living in sin. How loud that testimony. Isn't it? it to me, it's wrong. Uh, you, you can take some Christians, born again Christians, and you can pull them together. And, and, and I think you'll find there's going to be more living for the Lord than there is going to be not. But whose testimony is the loudest? Uh, it's the Christian who's in sin, isn't it? That's the one everybody sees. That's the one that stands out. Uh, why? Because the devil is the God of this world. That's the testimony he's going to put in bright lights. Uh, I tell you, if you ever go to that casino and you win the jackpot, your name's going in those bright lights and they'll put all kinds of lights around and everything and they'll put below it and he's a Christian. 
Shouldn't be gambling. Shouldn't be in the casino in the first place. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, he'll make sure and put that there, and he's a Christian. And he'll even put below that, and it was on Sunday. And let me see. Let's put some other things down there. And all of a sudden, everybody will know, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, well, they don't put that about everybody else. Why'd they put that about him? Well, because uh, the devil loves a hypocrite. And he'll make a poster child out of him. Uh, Give everybody a t-shirt to wear this picture on it. So the next time the Holy Spirit tries to convict their heart to get saved, they can say, but there's this Christian who stabbed me in the back. There's this Christian who went out and got drunk with all the other guys. There's this Christian who was unfaithful to his wife. There was this Christian You know how many preachers are on earth today around the world being faithful to God, honoring God, preaching the gospel? It's exciting when you're on vacation. You go to these different towns and cities and places and there's, there's gospel preaching churches and all of them and nobody has ever heard their name. But I could mention some names this morning of preachers. You'd know them right away. Uh, why? Because they were unfaithful. Because they did run away with the church secretary or they, uh, they, they, they did embezzle money or uh, they did get caught with a, a girl of Ill, Ill repute or, you know, whatever. And, and so the, they, they, they were broadcast on the news and, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, the, these, the, these faithful men that, you know, if, if, uh, I mean, I uh, think of our missionaries, Brother Petrary. Nobody knows who he is, but we do at Bible Baptist Church. I praise the Lord, faithfulness through the years. Preaching the gospel in China and and uh, uh, reaching souls and and uh, raising his family there and and uh, being faithful. Why don't why don't they put you know uh, I mean why don't they put that testimony up? And their testimony is loud. We didn't remember that as Christians. You get off into sin. There's a price to pay. And the devil will make sure everybody knows your sin. You're saying we'll find you out. Their loud testimony. But the faithful child of God who pleases God, who honors the Lord, uh, the devil's never going to make a commercial about him. But I praise the Lord, those in heaven know you. And God will use your testimony and it will speak loud. and It will encourage other Christians. Just the quiet testimony of honoring the Lord. As Brother Rod said, clean up that inside. And uh, that outside becomes clean. And people can't see the inside, can they? Usually the Christian who's bragging about how godly they are because they're in sin they're in sin Uh, it's the Christian who just quietly honors and lives for the Lord has a personal quiet life and walk with the Lord that uh, gets to enjoy the peace something about sin comes we try to cover it up don't we and uh, it's kind of like what was it one time they uh, they announced, they put it in the paper, wasn't it, uh, Brother Bud? The, the drug bust at Bible Baptist Church. Busted a guy for drugs at Bible Baptist Church. And uh, I was like, wow, I don't remember that. And, you know, I read the report, and I you know, talked to the, uh, the uh, sheriff and, and uh, the police chief at the time and, and asked, you know, why is that there? Well, they, they, we, we pulled them over in front of the church. You know, it's kind of, it can be a little bit of a rough neighborhood around here. And uh, we pulled them over in front of the church. And so they were just given the location. Well, why did they put it in bold print and, and you know, in, in, in the article? And so I went and uh, talked to the, uh, to the paper and said, you know, why, why'd you put that, you know, at Bible Baptist Church? Why, why couldn't you at least you know, put the location was in front of, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever, but, uh, you know, at Bible Baptist Church, and 
Want me to put a reprint and correct it? No. Tension, doesn't it? Uh, and uh, uh, now to, uh, you know, the, the uh, devil, it's kind of like uh, you get that uh, acne and so you put some makeup on it, right? The idea is to cover it up. But everybody can see it. And uh, in fact, sometimes it makes it even even worse than if you just left it alone. But, uh, you know, their their loud testimony, sometimes the. Bible says in first Peter three, one through five, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God, a great price. Talk about a godly woman. The hidden man of the heart. Be quiet. Uh, their loud testimony. You're a child of God. This world expects more out of you. How do you know that? Well, because you step out of line you try to live in sin, it's going to be broadcasted. Uh, the world does it. It's just the opposite, isn't it? They try to cover it up. Uh, a lost man, no big deal. But the Christian, uh, look at First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Here in First Thessalonians chapter four, verse eleven, the Bible says, "In that you study and be quiet." Or I mean, that you study to be quiet. Uh, I find it hard to study when it's noisy, don't you? But it says that you study. What are you supposed to study? How to be quiet? That you study to be quiet. That's kind of a strange. Uh, seems like a, a strange, you know, uh, instruction. That you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you that you may walk honestly towards them that are without that you may have lack of nothing uh, their loud contention their loud testimony and then thirdly their loud squeaking they're loud squeaking say i don't squeak they're loud squeaking you've heard the statement it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease they're loud squeaking you know the bible says study to be quiet to do your own business, to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Uh, God's fully able to make all of our needs. You meet all of our needs, amen? God's a fully able to solve all of our problems. God's able to fully take care of all of our battles. Uh, something about as a Christian, when you serve the Lord, you squeak less. Uh, when you, your faith in God grows, you squeak less. Uh, you know, as, a, a, as a, a new child of God, brand new, you're saved, you, you come to the Lord and you get saved and you start walking with the Lord. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's, uh, there's a lot of squeaks. The Lord begins to take care of those squeaks. and uh, God uses others to take care of those squeaks. And I, I praise the Lord, the Bible says we're supposed to bear one another's burdens. Amen. Uh, as a church, we're supposed to help one another. If you see needs, you, you, you try to take care of with one another. But a Christian in sin, their squeaks never get better. They never go away. Uh, God is able to take care 
of our squeaks. And there was those in Thessalonica that as loving as a church it was, there were those there that the Bible says they were busy bodies uh, going around causing uh, troubles and depending on others. And uh, You know, we need to depend on God. Be God dependent, amen? Not people dependent. Be God dependent. It doesn't mean we shouldn't ask for help when we need help. And it's it's always a blessing to be asked for help and to, you know, give a, a helping hand. And and uh, but th- but there are some people who are just super needy people, aren't they? Uh, I mean, they're 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 squeaking all the time. And and uh, again, the something about as you serve the Lord, God takes care of your needs. God uh, meets. Uh, you know, uh, th- there has to be a, a a point where you go from being the ministered to the ministering uh, the ministered to the ministering the bible says you help others out of your abundance and when they have need they'll help you and we all have needs and there's time that we go through trials and troubles and problems that come and but there's just something about a a a, a, a child of of god that is in sin there's going to be problems god's going to judge them they're going to be miserable all the time and uh, they're not going to be the ministers. They're going to be the, the ministered. Second uh, Thessalonians 3 says this. For we hear that there be some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. And... Uh, Think of the the riots that we've had, just kind of an illustration, but uh, think of the riots that we've, you know, just over the last couple of years. And and uh, I just can't picture being up. Even if I believed in what they were protesting, they call it, okay, violent protest, uh, protest, but uh, riot. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, even if I believe in what they were protesting, could could you take six months off from work and go protest i'm too busy uh there, there's no way i couldn't find you know uh, enough time to drive up there for a night to portland and protest uh where do they get all this time uh, I, I don't know what they live on uh you know, i mean how, how can you take that much time off and, and go up and destroy other people's property because you believe something's wrong or right those that that uh, you know, go to Washington, D.C. and protest things. I, I just, you know, uh, how do you, uh, I mean, how, how do you have the time? Uh, you know, all that it, it takes to uh, be involved. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, when you're busy serving the Lord, uh, you don't have time to cause trouble, do you? Uh, and, uh, and yet, what a blessing. There's a joy that comes from serving the Lord. So you're joyful serving the Lord and... You don't have time to cause trouble. Uh, you're, you're busy serving the Lord. But it's it's those that allow sin into their lives. The Bible says they're they're clamorous way or they're they're uh, uh, not violent. They're uh, foaming out their own shame. But uh, you know it. But you just want to see me struggle to remember it, right? Uh, back to Jude. What are you saying, Miss Darlene? Raging. Thank you. All right. Raging waves spewing out their own shame when sin uh, is allowed in our lives. Their loud contentions, clamorous, their loud testimony. Uh, that's the testimony that. All the lost, when you go to share the gospel with them, remember, that's the testimony that stands out. That's the, the loud testimony. And then they're loud squeaking. Problems never get better in their lives. They only get worse. You know, when you allow sin into your life, uh, that's just what sin does. Sin, lust, when it's conceived, brings forth sin. Sin brings forth death. Uh, it's always going to cause problems in your life. And the problems in your life are going to be problems that nobody else can solve. And God's not going to solve until we get obedient. 
we repent of that sin and we turn back to him uh, I praise the Lord that when people have problems they come to the church for help uh, they call up hey can you help us uh, at least there's some idea that they know that there's help in a church uh, because these people love and honor God the uh, statement you you feed somebody today they're going to be hungry tomorrow you know, what, what are they going to do tomorrow what are they going to do the day after that? What do you, you can't keep feeding them. You don't got enough food. Uh, the problem's never going to go away. The handout really isn't the solution. It's a temporary band-aid. Uh, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God is the only one who can meet the world's problems. Uh, and until a person turns to the Lord and is sincere with the Lord, uh, you're just going to be sticking a Band-Aid on there and another Band-Aid on there and another Band-Aid on there and the whole time it's just getting more rotten and more rotten and festering uh, underneath. And, and uh, uh, you're not taking care of the problem, you're taking care of the, uh, the symptom. And uh, you get a cold and you start coughing. So what do you do? You take some cough medicine. Ah, cold's gone. No, it's not. Uh, your throat's numb, so you know you're not coughing for a few minutes. But give it about. With me, with cough medicine, it seems like about three or four minutes later. But uh, I don't. I don't think this stuff works. But anyway, uh, you're just trying to take care of the symptoms. Uh, a Christian who gets into sin and gets away from the Lord what happens raging waves spewing out their own shame so the Bible says uh, their loud contentions their loud testimony and their loud squeaking and there's only one way to fix it there's band-aids but there's only one way to fix it called repentance uh, when you repent of your sin you turn back and you come and you ask God to please forgive you help you get that out of your life and all of a sudden you find the the peace and the quiet comes and the joy no more contention Now the devil, he leaves you alone. Why? Because he doesn't want to broadcast that kind of a testimony. This guy repented. And he got right with God. And all the squeaks are gone. And uh, no, he'll just he'll sit around and watch and wait until you make the decision. I think I'll play around with sin again a little bit more. Uh, hurt me last time, but it won't hurt me this time. Uh, stay faithful to the Lord. You don't want to become a raging wave spewing out your shame. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for, again, Jude. and Lord, I think we can all picture what Jude is talking about there with those that have gotten away from the Lord. And, and uh, Lord, I, I, I don't believe there's any temptation taking us, but such is common to man. Uh, Lord, and we're no more special than anyone else. And when... Uh, sin gets in our life and the effect uh, it has in the testimony. Uh, Lord, I, uh, uh, I just pray that uh, we would be troubled by our sin, convicted about our sin. Lord, those things that are not right with you, uh, we would confess and seek your forgiveness. And, and Lord, desire that you might continue that work inside of us that will uh, affect what goes on outside. Again, just want to thank you, Lord, for uh, the uh, message. And I, I pray, Lord, that, uh, again, your work would continue in our midst. Uh, if there's someone here this morning that uh, maybe is, as the term backsliding is, is uh, uh, 
uh, thought about or gotten into uh, allowed a sin in their lives. Uh, Lord, maybe it's something that has always been there, but uh, you've just been convicting them about it lately and they've just been unwilling to uh, give that up. Uh, Lord, I pray that this morning we could bring those things to you. Uh, Lord, that we'd understand what it means to study, uh, to be quiet. Uh, Thank you, Lord, that we can uh, trust in you and have faith in you to meet all of our needs, uh, to be our God. Uh, Lord, you are sufficient. I pray, Father, that you would just bless the invitation. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.